Hey everyone, welcome back. So tomorrow's the day for 7.1 patch. Uh, they're going to be taking the servers offline to uh, update the game. So I just wanted to go over the patch notes really quick. I'm super, super excited. Um, there are a lot of class balance changes that I probably won't get into, but I'll post the link to the um, to the patch notes page in the description below. So you guys can take a look at it if you want. Um, so... Let's look at the highlights. Story update, Digging Deeger, Uncover. So I think this is the new story, uh, the story portion that you can do. So uncover a glimpse of Darth Malgus's mysterious plans in this new update place. We'll learn more about Malgus's fascination with Darth Null, as well as the fate of Safar Hakeem, the Jedi Padawan who dueled in the ancient ruins of Balaam. Sweet. So I always love going through the story when I first start. There isn't going to be a level increase, a level cap increase, but um, yeah, new story content is always really cool. Uh, here's the new operation that they're adding, which is going to be super cool. I think this is the only way that you can get your item rating to 340, which will be the new cap for uh, nightmare operations. Uh, team up with your friends and take on members of an obscure Sith cult set on harvesting technology from an ancient weapon of terrifying power. Power yourself up all the way to item rating 340. Doesn't really make sense since like I play a Sith character, so I'm like, why would I be taking on a Sith cult? Um, I, I'll join the Sith cult if possible. <laughs> um, Manon Daily Area. Explore the depths of Manon in our new daily area. Expand your faction's influence with all new story and daily quests. Uh, new achievements and new reputation track including new rewards and titles so it looks like they have just a new um daily area quest which is the quest that you can basically just grab five dailies and complete the whole planet it gives you a good chunk of conquest points um so class balance we'll go through those very briefly but i'm not going to dive too deeply into those uh, there are new tacticals, which is really cool. It's always cool when they're adding those. It just gives you um, additional ways to kind of separate your build from other people. Uh, UI enhancement enhancements. I didn't even know that they were doing this, actually. To improve player experience, we've made changes to the character window, weapons, and outfitter, and combat style icons, as well as added customization options to chat. Interesting. Um, I'm, I'll be interesting to see... I'll be interested to see how exactly they do this. I'll probably make an, a, a video just to go over this a little bit. Just a super quick one. Uh, power increase. New item ratings have been added to upgrade uh, vendors on the fleet. Increase your power up to item rating 330 by completing <coughs> excuse me, conquests, flashpoints, and legacy operations. So three, you could get 330 already from 7.0. Uh, by doing the nightmare operations, but I think 330 is specifically for like PvP and um, just conquest stuff, stuff like that. So uh, it should elaborate on that a little bit later. Uh, Narshada Nightlife. The Narshada Nightlife event is back. Nice, there's gonna be a ton of gambling. Test your look at one of our casinos to uh, earn the new high roller weapons. Cool. And I did see a couple of the weapons and they look really, really cool. Uh, general, increase the number of guild commendations given when a guild meets their conquest target. I like that a lot. I think that the rewards for the conquest are really, really low. The The amount you have to get of conquest points is very low, and the rewards are essentially insignificant. Like I said in one of my previous videos, you're getting credit certificates for 25,000 credits and very basic items on the GTN costs millions and millions and millions of credits. So it's really, it's almost irrelevant, the stuff that you get. You have to do other things to make credits. Uh, added more options to customize subtitle, subtitles. Among the new options, players can perform increases subtitle skill further than you could previously change the player of the text, add a background. Nice, so just more UI edit stuff. Uh, rested experience now correctly increases when a character is locked out and rest on. Nice. It's possible to see weapons when inspecting a character in the outfit designer. I didn't know that wasn't possible before. Augments now function in level shifted content with their stats scaling appropriately. This is a huge change because before, augments were essentially irrelevant in most instances, uh, inc including PvP, I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that, but yeah. Alacrity 
accuracy and shield chance are no longer scaled by the level shift system outside of PvP. I'm not sure what exactly that means. No longer scaled by the level shift. So I think that you will still have your full um, percentages from these even if you're being scaled lower on a lower level planet. I believe that's what that means, but it's still the same in PvP. Everyone will be scaled to 80. Uh, the field respec leg legacy perk now appears as an unlock option in the character window for eligible players. That's really cool. Improve the visibility of the materials received in the deconstruction window. Nice. Updated the colors of the level and class in the character selection screen to increase readability. Always good. A new loadout is no longer created when closing the loadout window while creating a new one. That's good. It can get really messy in there. The loadout character preview is now updated when selecting different loadouts. NBC and item names no longer exceed the header section of the loot window. So it looks like these are just kind of little UI bugs that they're fixing here. So we'll go ahead and skip some of these. Uh, guild perk. Yeah, ability stuff, just little bug fixes here and there. Uh, so cartel market, the cartel market window is now always available when syndicate plans are turned in while the welcome window is open. Fix the following issues on the baby progenitor, progenitor, feeding tank decoration. Uh, okay, we don't need to read that. Okay, items and economy. Following 7.0 changes to itemization, removing tactical items listed below from the vendor's character's inventories, the items will be converted into 7,000 credits. That's ridiculous. That should that should be so much more. Tacticals were, I think, 5,000 plus or minus um, tech fragments. So that we should at least get tech fragments, and they should increase the tech fragment cap because this is this is really not a good change. I don't think. I like that, I mean, it's fine that they're removing them, but at least reward us appropriately for the amount of work that we put in to buy these tacticals. So Sonic Kill, Missile Backpass, there's only two, which is good. Fix the following issues with Valkyrie and Armor Set. It looks like a couple more bug fixes. Um, textures, animations, bag of daily matrices, tooltip, not correctly matching daily resource matrices instead of aquatic resource matrices. Interesting. Uh, display damage in their tooltip, updated the following descriptions, source of war, fleets. Hmm. Restored legendary implant color scheme for readability. That's really nice, actually. That was, it gets a little messy um, when they are overlapping and stuff with the colors. Remove the unusable galactic command crates from the, gra from the game. Open grade 10 treasure hunting lock boxes before level 80 no longer drop level 80 items. That's really nice. Items from Onslaught equipment caches no longer contain amplifiers. Rename the bag of daily matrices to bag of daily resource matrices. Okay. Chinese gear pieces now display the proper visuals based on the player faction. Nice. So these are the combat style changes and the character changes. So we're going to skip over these for right now. But, um,. Yeah, you can see the patch notes on sortor.com if you want to look into these a bit more. There are actually a ton of changes, so we'll see how that goes. I may do this in another video, um, but just for the sake of time, we'll just do the, the essentials here. Uh, flashpoints, Master Mode Flashpoints are now only available in Group Finder at level 80, which I think is great. There's no point in having a sub 80 doing Master Mode Flashpoints. They, you, they won't have good enough gear to be useful. Uh, players can no longer select a flashpoint from a group finder window if they already have a mission for the same flashpoint at a different difficulty level. This is really key because a lot of times you'll have to completely remove your instance. You have to refresh your instance in order to be able to join some of these flashpoints because you have two different missions open for the same at different difficulty level. So that's really good. The, ex the exit area button now appears on the minimap when the player is inside a flashpoint. Players are now correctly scaled to level 65 inside all star fortresses. I'm not, there must have been an issue with that or something. The combat support droid icon in the mission tracker is no longer grayed out even when usable in story mode flashpoints. That's nice. So here are just some fixes for the flashpoints. It looks like uh, for operations, R4 Anomaly story mode is now available through Group Finder. To celebrate the release of R4 Anomaly, it will remain in Group Finder every week. That's awesome. 
reduce the health of all encounters across op all operations and in all modes. So it looks like they nerfed all operations to make them a little bit easier. Um, that's pretty cool, I guess. Some of them, the bosses, the boss mechanics aren't very difficult. The, the bosses just have so much health that they take so long to actually complete the operation. So I think this is a good change. Uh, Nightmare is still pretty darn hard, so reducing the health is fine because it's, it's really focusing. It looks like they're moving towards focusing on doing the mechanics of the bosses rather than just having a millions of HP that are just going to take more time rather than just knowing the boss and, and getting it done. Um, so here, Operation Terminal offers weekly missions for level 80 characters only. That's pretty cool. We'll see what missions those are. Uh, these are just some updates for the operations, it looks like. Uh, missions and NPCs. Uh, I think we can probably skip over these as well. They're just probably quick changes for bugs and missions and NPCs and stuff. Uh, here we go. Here's what we're looking for. Arenas and Warzone. The following missions now reward tech fragments for players. 75 and above that is awesome because otherwise tech fragments you basically had to do operations if, or flash points if you want to farm them decently pvp wasn't really giving any of them so this is a really good change i think tech fragments are going to be a lot more readily available and they are needed to upgrade implants and a couple of other things too uh mole spikes stun effect can no longer be clicked off in pvp interesting i didn't i didn't know that you could click that off. Maybe you would right click it and you would just be unstunned or something. That's pretty funny. Uh, Conquest. Defeating the Eyeless during the Rackle Resurgence event no longer grants credits. Interesting. Defeating Xeno Analyst during the Resurgence of the Greedy event no longer gives credits towards the Activity Finder Socialite Conquest objective. Okay. Events. Feast of Prosperity. Mission Terminals for Feast of Prosperity. Daily missions are now highlighted. Uh, Unruly patrons in casinos in Rashida are not correctly scaled during the should on night time so in patch they must have not been working properly uh galactic starfighter increases the experience players receive from galactic starfighter matches from level 60 76 to 79 that's pretty good change because you were only getting a couple thousand xp when you need a couple million to level from these last levels uh completing the personal conquest goals while in a galactic starfighter match gives progression for the technological advancements mission okay so i know before that the those matches were not giving you um the progress for this mission for the uh implants so that's really cool uh galactic seasons is the last portion players who didn't complete the reputation track before the end of galactic season two shadows of the underworld can now keep on progressing this track and earn legacy titles shadow initiative Masters of Shadows and Shadows Veil vale until the launch of Galactic Season 3. More info and that one place. Cool. Syndicate plans will continue to drop for mobs across the galaxy for players who have not completed the reputation track. Jawa Intel will also remain available from Braz on the fleet to increase the chance to obtain Syndicate plans. That's cool. Galactic Season Timer from the Welcome window is now correctly working. It is no longer It no longer disappears from the Galactic Season window. Players can now use Galactic Season Catch-Up function. Um, Trader Among the Kiss, Flashpoint, all modes now correctly gives points for the completion of legacies of the ambitious and deceitful seasonal objective. Seasonal objective, still got it, now only progresses when completing the objective without a companion. Interesting. So, uh, we can probably skip these last couple, they're just some, some really brief, uh, conquest changes, or end galactic season changes, rather. So overall, I'm really excited for this. I'm glad that they're increasing the level cap to start the grind up again. And uh, I'm very excited to try out this new operation. Master mode, or nightmare mode, is probably going to be pretty tough. People are going to have to make some guides for that and, and stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to go over the class balances too. And um, definitely these as well, the UI enhancements, I think. They've made a lot of good changes since the launch of this game. I have thousands of hours in this game. And I started uh, basically at launch, and the UI has come a long way. It's it's really it's really great in its customizability. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I'm excited. There are a couple events in game coming up, which I think will be really cool. Uh, it's always a good change to have more stuff to do in the game. Well, I mean, there already is a mountain of stuff to do, but always always more.
And I also wanted to introduce you guys to Louie, our new kitty. He's a little tabby. He's about, he's only like two, two and a half months right now. He's very mellow. And he's been, um, kind of just hangs out with me in here while I'm gaming and, and, uh, and working too. So, yeah, he's a, he's a really good kitty. But, um, yeah, as far as SOTOR, I will definitely be streaming quite a bit this week. Definitely, uh, probably tonight, Monday, um, or tomorrow, Monday, rather. Sorry about that. Losing my days. Uh, so we will stream, uh, Tuesday when the patch drops, Tuesday in the evening, and probably Thursday, Friday as well. And then on Saturday, I'll be doing the Project Gorgon stream. I do have some news for the Project Gorgon stream as well, and I will make a separate video for that and, and send it over to you guys. But thank you guys very much for watching. Um, yeah, tune into my Twitch stream. Uh, it is twitch.tv slash the Raekwon, same name. And I hope you guys have a great day. If you have any questions or suggestions for videos I should make, leave them in the comments, and uh, I will see you guys soon.